Proxmox VE9 is now generally available, and a lot of us are upgrading from A.x to the new release. It's a great and fantastic hypervisor. But just like any platform, the defaults aren't necessarily hardened enough for production or maybe even a home lab if you want to take security seriously. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the top Proxmox 9 security hardening steps that you need to know about. So let's get started and dive in. First up is SSH. How do you secure it in Proxmox VE9? Well, just like with any Linux-based system, SSH is one of the number one attack vectors that attackers will use, especially they will attempt to brute force your SSH port that is open with password attempts and find the password combination that you use to secure your Linux system. Now, the best practice here is simple. Disable root SSH access altogether. Together. Create a normal user with sudo privileges and switch from password authentication to using SSH keys only. Now, that means that you're going to make a couple of changes in a special file that's located at etsy slash SSH, and it's the sshd underscore config file. And you're going to set a couple of parameters, permit root login to know and password authentication to know as well. Then you're going to restart SSH with service SSH restart command. Optionally, you can change the SSH port to something that's non-standard, but honestly, security by obscurity no longer works with the really good tools that attackers have. For active protection as well, you can use tools like fail to ban that can also help minimize brute force attempts. And Proxmox documents all of this in their admin guide if you need a step-by-step -step help guide for that. But let's take a look at this file where you make these simple changes for SSH that make a lot of difference when it comes to security. I'm logged into my Proxmox 9 server and I want to show you just how easy it is to shore up your SSH security and connectivity. So I'm going to click on my PVE9 host. I'm going to open a shell and I'm just going to nano etsy ssh sshd underscore config and this is a familiar file not just proxmox specific if you're used to doing this for other linux hosts one of the things that i want to show you that is enabled by default is this permit root login so i'm going to change this to no and i'm going to also enable public key authentication and it's enabled as you can see in the config but it's commented out so we've got permit root login no and we've got pub key authentication yes and then if we scroll on down we're going to see password authentication we can set this to explicitly be no if we want to do that and if we set this to no, it will make sure that you have to use a public key to authenticate to your Proxmox VE server. So these two work hand in hand. So between these settings, permit root login to no, pub key authentication, and password authentication, just that simple change can definitely shore up your SSH security. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to exit out. And then what we need to do is issue a service SSH restart. Simple as that. And that instantiates all of those SSH settings so that when we SSH into this Proxmox VE9 server, we're going to be required to use that public key authentication. Next up is the built-in Proxmox firewall. And I think this is a feature that's probably underutilized across the board. This works at both the data center level as well as the node level, giving you fine grain control and you can figure out how you want to implement this. A good approach is a deny all rule by default, and then you whitelist exactly what you need. And at a minimum, that whitelist would probably contain things like the web interface on port 8006, cluster communication port, like CoroSync and storage protocols like NFS, iSCSI, SIFS, and SSH. Everything else can likely be blocked, or you can start there and then pinhole things as needed. You can apply global rules at the data center level and then make those fine grain adjustments per node. 
Now, groups also make it easy to replicate rules across multiple hosts. Let me show you where the firewall settings are at and how we make some of these changes. OK, so let's look at the Proxmox firewall. So I'm going to take you to the command line first. Let's open up a command shell. And I'm going to show you the command PVE firewall status. And this will give you an idea of what this looks like by default, what configuration it's running. As you can see, the service is running. However, it is showing as disabled. Why is that? Well, by default, this is the setting that it comes out of the box, out of a fresh install or upgrade if you haven't change these settings before the upgrade. So let's minimize this. And I want to show you if we look at the Proxmox host level, if I go down to firewall, if I go to options, we can see firewall is enabled. It's set to yes. However, if I go to data center, if I go to that same area and it's remembering, uh, if I go to options there, we see firewall is no. That's where we get the firewall enabled is no or disabled when we look at that command pbe dash firewall space status now i want to show you why you need to be careful with the proxmox firewall if i go back to node pbe9 i go back to my node level if i look at my firewall i have no firewall rules configured that means i'm not affecting traffic at any way shape or form it's going to rely on this data center level uh, at that point so if we go to the data center level, we have no firewall configuration rules configured. Now, what happens if I just go in here and I flag this on? Let's look and see. So if I click OK, let's go back to our PVE host and we start to see something ominous here. As you can see, I've got a loading screen. Nothing is populating. And the reason for that is we have essentially locked ourselves out of our Proxmox VE9 server because we didn't have any rules stating that we wanted to allow traffic either place, either on the host or at the data center level. So still loading and things are just failing. Uh, connection error, server offline. So I'm just going to reset just briefly here. I'm going to refresh and now I've reset my virtual machine back. I want to show you how to prevent that from happening. So in my PVE9 server, my node level, if I click there, if I go to firewall, I'm going to add a rule that says destination port is 8006 and protocol is TCP. Those are the two that are required on this screen. Now I'm going to click add and I'm going to click this checkbox just adding the rule doesn't turn it on. So we want to click the checkbox. So now the rule is on. Now, if I go back to data center and I double click firewall, I enable firewall, click OK. Firewall is now enabled. Is our host still viewable? Yes. As we can see, everything is still functioning as normal. This gives you an idea that the firewall is very powerful. However, it is also something that you've got to treat very delicately so as not to lock yourself out of your Proxmox host. Now, next up is protecting the web interface with trusted SSL certificates. Proxmox actually is a step ahead on this front in that it already secures the web administration UI with a self-signed certificate. So it does have HTTPS out of the box by default. However, it's not a trusted certificate. For production or even a serious home lab, you'll want to make sure you've got a trusted certificate. And the good news is Proxmox has built-in Let's Encrypt support under Data Center and the Acme menu. And if you're air-gapped, you can use the DNS challenge method. Another great option is to run a reverse proxy like Nginx or traffic in front of your cluster so that you can manage TLS centrally and even layer in features that those reverse proxies have like WAF and rate limiting. In Proxmox, it's easy to spin up a Let's Encrypt certificate. If you navigate to your data center node and then Acme, you're going to see accounts and challenge plugins. And challenge plugins are what we're familiar with using that DNS challenge workflow, like with Cloudflare, DNS Made Easy, or many of the other ones that are out there. And I'll show you, you need to add that challenge plugin here first. So if you click the add button, you're going to create those DNS plugins here. And notice the dropdown. 
We've got all of the DNS providers that we're familiar with, especially Cloudflare, many of the other ones out there, DigitalOcean, so on and so forth. So you just choose the one that you want to go with. I'm going to choose Cloudflare Manage DNS. And I'm not actually going to populate this because I don't have the keys and all that handy. But here you just enter the information as needed, the account ID, email, key, which is your token key, token ID, and then zone ID for the DNS zone that you want to actually have this pull from or create the challenge for. Once you add that there, then you navigate to your PVE host and you'll go down to certificates under system and you're going to see your Acme node here that we can add. So if we click add here, then we can change that challenge type to DNS. And if we would have added something in data center, that would have shown up here. But as you can see, the drop down is just empty because we didn't actually add anything. So then we would put in our PVE 9.my.domain, whatever that public domain is that you're wanting to have that proper let's encrypt certificate for and then use your dns plugin next is use 2fa authentication i think this should be standard these days even with tls usernames and passwords alone are not enough proxmox makes it really easy to enable 2fa and honestly this is something vSphere still hasn't gotten right in my honest opinion you can enable totp with google authenticator or authy or use WebAuthn with YubiKeys. Turn this on for your root at PAM account immediately. That is a given. And then create daily admin accounts that also use 2FA. Now this is a simple strategy, but it's massively effective at reducing risk if your credentials are ever leaked. The attacker, even if they have your password, they still don't have all of those authentication factors that allow them to authenticate successfully. So under the data center node, we've got the two-factor authentication menu under permissions. And if you click two-factor, and if we click the add button, we've got various options here, TOTP, WebAuthN, recovery keys, Ubico, and of course, TOTP, we get our lovely QR code that we can scan. We all know what to do with this, or we can copy the secret if you need to set that up manually. So really great functionality, simply built in to Proxmox. And I, I love this, that we've actually got this ability. So hats off to Proxmox for making this easy and simple security that's built in. Now, the next one is a no brainer and one that we are used to in previous versions of Proxmox. Keep your Proxmox VE9 server updated. Now, keeping your system updated might sound obvious, but it's one of the most effective security practices. And you definitely, if you're in production, want to consider using the enterprise repo if you have a subscription or in a home lab, the no subscription repo if you don't have that subscription, which most of us don't in a home lab. Either way, patching regularly is a key key fundamental step for good security. You can even configure unattended upgrades for critical security patches on the underlying Debian OS. Just don't forget things like container templates, guest tools, and kernel upgrades. And as a pro tip, I like using nested virtualization in Proxmox to test updates on a nested node before I actually apply those to my production home lab node. And this helps you to have confidence or flesh out any issues before they happen with your production node and just makes life a little bit easier. You can always YOLO it, but I recommend not doing that if you want to have an uneventful upgrade experience, which I would guess would apply to most of us. I know most of you are familiar with updates. This is kind of a basic essential thing that most of us do with our Proxmox environments anyway, but just wanted to click around and show you guys this just as a sanity check. If you go to your Proxmox node, updates, repositories, of course, you'll want to make sure if you don't have that proper subscription that you most likely would want to have in a production environment. And those subscription repositories are updates that have been fully vetted. Now, the no subscription repositories, of course, are less vetted. And so that's kind of the difference here. But for home lab, obviously, this is the way to go. Just make sure you enable your no subscription repositories. You can see I've disabled the enterprise and PVE enterprise. If you don't do that, when it goes to just do its normal checks, you're going to see those errors in your cluster event logs or your task. So you want to disable those and then you'll want to enable your no subscription repositories. Next is role based access control. Stop using root for everything or all of your admin work. 
Proxbox has really great role-based access control built into the solution itself. And you can also create roles and customize those, those roles as needed. As you can see under the data center node, under the permissions menu, we've got various entries here, users, as well as groups and roles. And the roles are really underutilized, I would say, for security in Proxbox VE server. Make use of these built-in roles. As you can see, of course, administrator, PVE admin, we've got PVE auditor, data store admin. So lots of really cool built-in roles that you could possibly take advantage of. However, you can also customize and create your own role. So if you want to create something with various privileges, you can do that. You can select the ones that you want and so on and so forth. Just customize that, create the role, and then there you go. You've got a role specific to the task at hand that you want to potentially have a user be able to be delegated to do or just for yourself for good security hygiene. You can create roles such as the backup operator, a VM administrator or viewer, and you can assign those to various users or groups. Now that way, if an account is compromised, the damage is limited. Next, be sure to secure your storage and backups. Don't forget security for your storage area network, particularly the networking side, as well as backups. Lock down things like NFS and iSCSI so that only your Proxmox nodes can connect. For Proxmox backup server, be sure to enable client-side encryption and immutable backups, and that way your backups are safe from things like ransomware or even accidental deletion that sometimes happens and makes it where we can't restore data. Also, monitor your Proxmox VE9 server. Forward syslogs to a central server. Watch for repeated failed login attempts and configure things like Proxmox email notifications for failed jobs or logins that are a bit out of the norm. Disabling unused hardware like onboard audio, if you're using a desktop or workstation type motherboard, they're gonna have a lot of those types of devices and be sure to enable secure boot. And then on the network side, be sure to protect your management interfaces, things like the iDirect interface, IPMI, ILO, with strong and very unique passwords. Also put your Proxmox management interfaces on a dedicated VLAN separate from all of your virtual machine traffic, LXC container traffic, and of course, use a UPS so that power disruptions also don't compromise your environment. So there you have it, the top security hardening tips for Proxmox VE9. From SSH hardening and firewalls to TLS, two-factor authentication, and role-based access control, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit you can implement right now to drastically improve the security posture of your Proxmox VE9 server. Proxmox 9 is shaping up to be a fantastic release. Don't rely completely on those defaults if you want to stay secure. What hardening steps are you using in your Proxmox environment? Well, drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss future videos. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Please do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.